I'm Donna from Kromsky North America. Today we'll be assembling the Kromsky Harp Forte. This loom comes in at 8, 16, 24, and a 32 inch width. Today we'll be using the 16 inch. Once you've got everything out of your box, lay them out and double check to make certain that you've got all of your pieces before we begin. Now initially we won't be using everything to assemble the loom. Uh, the only thing that you need from this package is your lacing. You also won't need your clamps, your working jowls, threading hook, shuttle sticks, pickup stick, or your heddle. So we're going to go ahead and set those aside for now. In order to assemble your loom, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver. And we'll begin by attaching the pawl to the side of the frame. Take a look at your frames and notice that there are numbers written on the sides. This is a three, two, one, and four. For this first step, you're gonna need the pan head screw, the small washer, and the pawls. Now you'll insert the screw into the pawl and put the washer on the other side of the pawl. Now when you attach these, they're going to go into the hole closest to the magnet on the frame side that's numbered two and three. Now it's also important to note that there may, it makes a difference which side they go on. The way I like to look at it is it, it kind of looks like a little fish diving towards the center of the loom. So for this particular one, it's going to go over on this side and you can see it looks like a fish swimming towards the center. Screw this all the way in. And then back it out just a touch until it will swing freely. And then you'll repeat the same thing on the other side, again making certain that it swoops in a downward fashion away from the end of the loom. Now take a minute to lay out all your parts the same way that they have them in the directions. This is going to help you to get the front beam in the front and the back beam in the back and get all the parts in the right places. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the ratchets. You'll notice that they go, the teeth kind of curve in one direction more than they do the other. That curve needs to head towards the center of the loom. Um, if not, the pole's not going to lock in there properly and your tension is going to slip. Um, so you'll need to make certain that you've got them facing in the right direction before you install them. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take the large washer, place it on the end with the ratchet, and slide it into the side. Now your pawl is going to want to come around and hang out with that magnet. So just make sure it's not in the way. You'll put the two small shims next to each other on the other side of the beam. And slide that in. And then you'll do the same on the other side. Now at this point there's nothing actually holding the loom together. So we're going to put the cross supports on next. Make certain that you're lining up the number on the end of the cross support with the number that corresponds on the side of the frame. You'll be using your longer wood screws. And they'll go into the holes closest to the end of the loom. And you'll, you'll know that it's the right hole because it's got a little cutout section for the head of the screw. Now you'll attach these, but you won't screw these all the way down just yet. Get them mostly tight, but not completely. Now once you've got your cross supports in, just double check to make sure that everything is flat and it's resting squarely on the table before you tighten them all the way down. Next we'll be attaching the handles. Take a look at your beam and you'll see that there's a little pre-drilled hole here. We want to line it up so that the screw goes into that pre-drilled hole. 
So simply slide it on. And then I find it helpful to take a toothpick and poke it into the hole to locate that hole that's on the beam because once it's in there it is a little bit difficult to see. It's also helpful to know that the distance between the handle and the frame should be about one millimeter so that kind of gives you an idea of how far in to go and then once you've located your hole uh, just go ahead and take your screw and attach your handle and then you'll do that on all four handles. Now we're going to attach the heddle blocks. Now if you've lost track of which is the front of your loom and which is the back of the loom, it's real easy to tell. Uh, take a look at your ratchet and pawl. That's going to go on the right hand side when you're facing your loom. And you'll also notice that the distance between the cross supports and the back beam is much wider than it is between the cross support and the front beam. And now to locate the holes that your heddle blocks go into, Face your loom with the front of the beam closest to you, and then look just behind the seam on the side of the frame. There's a small hole and a slightly larger hole just offset above it. That small hole is where this little peg goes in. And just insert that. Take your bolt, run it all the way through, then place a washer onto the bolt and tighten it down with the wing nut. Tighten it all the way down until this marries the wood. And then repeat it on the other side. Your loom comes with two strings. You'll need to tie a knot into the end of each string, leaving a loop that's going to go over the screw. Now this little screw, you're going to look on your beam here, and you'll see that there's a pre-drilled hole. Place that in there and screw it part way down. Then you'll take the little loop that you've created with your knot, place it over the screw, and then tighten it down. Then you'll begin lashing. You take your other end, and going from front to back, go through the first hole, bring it back around, and again go from front to back through the second hole, front to back through the third and fourth hole. Now you'll tie another loop on this end of the string and place this over the other screw and tighten that one down. You'll repeat this process on the other beam as well. If you use this preferred method of attaching your strings to your loom, it'll make it a lot easier for you to keep your warp straight. Um, you can actually make adjustments in it, um, whereas if you, you've tied individual pieces on, you won't be able to do it. And now let's take a look at some of those extra parts that we had set aside earlier. you got your warping pegs that go on the back of your loom. They slide right in, and you can use this as a warping board which is a really unique feature of our loom. Now your other option is direct warp. Now that's done with the warping peg, which is the larger peg that comes in with your loom. And this little base, you'll attach a clamp to the bottom with this wood block, and then just tighten it onto the end of a table and you can use that for your direct warp. Now this same clamp can also be used for attaching your loom to the table if you don't have a stand. It's going to go into these holes here on the frame and attach to the side of the table so that it doesn't move when you're trying to weave. You'll also receive this little U-shaped block. A lot of people wonder what this is for. Um, it's called a warp helper and you'll slide it onto the side of your loom and then you can place your dowels through it and as you warp, slide your dowels forward and attach your lashing. And it just kind of acts as a, a third hand for you so that things aren't flopping all over while you're trying to warp. And then once you've got all of your lashings on, you just remove it. You'll also receive the two-sided threading hook. This smaller wire hook is to be used with the 
the smaller heddles. Um, you can use it for real thin, fragile yarns when you're pulling it through. And then, of course, you've got your regular on the other side. And then you've got two shuttle sticks, good for if you're going to do two different colors. A pickup stick, which is great for doing intricate weaving and patterning. And then, of course, you've got your heddle. And that should be just about it. Your loom is now completely assembled and ready for use. There are several accessories that you can get to go along with your Kromsky Heart Forte. One of them is the second heddle block, which we mentioned earlier. This will expand your weaving capabilities. Um, you can do more ends per inch, and you can do some more intricate designs and things. Um, one of the other things is our travel bag. Um, the nice thing about the Kromsky loom is that when you fold it up to travel with it, even if you have a project on the loom, you can still fold it in half. You just loosen up your warp a little bit and release the brackets, fold it up, and now if you've got a warp on here, it's going to keep this in place. If you don't, I recommend that you take it off. Um, and then you close it up and it fits right into our bag. These bags come in 16, 24, and 32 inches. Now, one of the other accessories that you may want to consider is a floor stand. And those stands come in 8, 16, 24, and 32. Um, they will not actually fit inside the bag. However, we have straps on the back side that you can hook up and attach your stand through here to carry it with you so that it's all nice and compact. I hope you enjoy your loom.